Hello, everyone. It is me, Jordan Smith, the voice and the astrologer behind this YouTube channel. I have been talking, and I'm sure you guys heard me um, say this last week, that I was going to do a video where I was going to talk about ethics and astrology. I think because I worked in mental health prior to this, um, and I have a lot of Capricorn, and it's in the eighth house, as I talk about often, I have a very strong desire to make sure that whenever I am practicing astrology, that I'm being ethical, especially in regards to clients. So there's a few things that I want to talk about because I've had quite a few clients over the past few years come and talk to me about some of their experiences that have occurred with other astrologers. Um, recently, a few weeks back, I even had a client who um, came and saw me and was talking about a reading she had with someone else and it brought me to tears um, because it had such an impact on her in a negative way. And that's why it's so important to, if you are a practicing astrologer, you're wanting to become a, an astrologer, that you understand some baseline um, <clears throat> rules I feel like it should be kind of understood but I don't want to assume that and then also this video is not just for people who are wanting to become astrologers this is for people who seek out astrologers for astrological counseling I want to validate a couple of things um for you especially if you're someone who's had an experience that was wounding is the word that I'm going to say or use. So there's a couple of things. Number one, as an astrologer, <clears throat> we don't have like in the medical field with um, any type of mental health, uh, they have HIPAA regulations. We as astrologers do not have any type of HIPAA. Um, and so I like to call it astrological HIPAA. Um, which is, I'm not going to be saying, Sarah Jane told me blah, blah, blah in her session and going around talking about it. It's unethical. Um, from, a, a, from time to time, I will have a question about someone's chart because I'm like, I, this is what I saw. I want to make sure that this is what I, I was seeing. This client said this, and I feel like it reflected that in their chart. And I leave it anonymously to one of my um, <clears throat> mentors, because quite frankly, if you're an astrologer, you're always going to be a student of an astrology. If someone tells you that they're not, you should probably run because there is so much to learn. It's why I love this. But there's a difference between wanting to validate and make sure that you gave your client the best reading possible and wanting to make sure that what you reflected and validated to them is accurate. From time to time, I'm not perfect. I still have my own questions that come up and I seek wise counsel. It's no different than when you're a therapist, you are going to have someone who oversees you. And especially even once you get your license to have that license, you have to continue to go to someone where you can process what your compassion fatigue, um, what's coming across with your own clients. So this is very similar um, to that, which is what I do. And it's not every time. It's actually pretty sparse, but from time to time, I will seek wise counsel. And that's something that is actually really good and beneficial. I think that um, it wouldn't be good if I felt like I knew everything. The other thing is, is that, so we don't want to, you know, 
a good astrologer who is ethical is not going to go around talking about people's private business. It is an honor that my clients come and talk to me and they share very personal things with me. I would never want to betray their trust. Um, and so again, you don't want to be going to an astrologer who is talking about your chart and what you've said to other people. And that can happen. I've seen it happen with people who, um, if they have like a spouse or a partner who's in astrology, sometimes I've seen that happen. Um, I've also, people who um, I've known where I live, I've, I've seen other astrologers do that too. And I've said something about it. Um, I have no qualms about speaking up about how that's not okay. So <clears throat> the other thing I want to speak about is it's really important that as an astrologer that you are doing your own personal work um, and that you are able to self-reflect and to be honest with yourself. Um you know, because there can tend to be projection that happens. And that is something that I have seen time and time and time again, when I've had someone come to me and they've had a reading with someone and it is where that person, oftentimes it's someone that I, I might've known, whether it be here where I live or just in the astrological community, where that person is actually projecting their own dynamics onto someone else's natal chart. And it's because they're not doing their own inner work. I even had, um, I've had my fair share of readings uh, before I became an astrologer. And one of them that sticks out the most to me that was very detrimental. Um, and I called it in for my own reasons, okay? Um, I went to an astrologer. It was for my birthday one year, and we were talking about my relationship I was having at the time. And at the end of my session with this person, they told me, yeah, you and your weird sex. And to this day, I'm like, weird sex? Like, what What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> like, um, I just didn't know what this person was referring to. And also, it was the tone and how this astrologer said it, it was very judgmental. So that leads me to this other dynamic of when you are sitting with an astrologer, if you are experiencing them being judgmental, that is not okay. Sometimes I will not necessarily give like tough love, but I will plant seeds. I will, if, they're, if someone's talking about something, I can be very scorpionic. And be like, well, yeah, but this is also occurring within you right now or something like that. Um, not because I'm judging, but it's because it's like it's wanting to come to a head. Sometimes I don't say things because it's like I intuitively am like this person isn't ready to hear this, you know, and I need to be gentle about this. But there's never any judgment. Um, I'm going to tell you right here, right now, I have lived probably like eight lives in this one life. There's nothing that I've had a client come to me about that I've ever felt like I could judge them for. Um, whether that be their sexuality, how they're identifying on a gender level, um, they're, if they've had abuse or trauma, or even if they have talked to me about something that they've done that they feel um, natural guilt about, and it could be something that's quote unquote really bad, you know, but it's, there's a reason why all of us experience certain things. And <clears throat> when I was learning about astrology, I was doing the correspondence course through evolutionary astrology. And I remember Jeff on that talked about how, if you were going to be judgmental, that this was not the right career for you. And I tend to extremely agree with that. There is no room for judgment to be judgmental during this. You can make a judgment call when um, you're with a client about whether or not there's something that they should hear. 
Um, but as far as viewing them uh, in a fragmented way of bad, good, this, that, or the other, you've got to leave that out the door. I've had moms who've come and seen me um, in sessions and they have talked and been really honest about their feelings towards their kids and what's going on in their life. And whenever you look at their chart, you can totally see that maybe that there's been prior lifetimes of where they didn't get to, uh, there were separations with them and their kids. And so in this lifetime, they're not really knowing how to show up as a parent, or maybe they had to abandon their child uh, for survival reasons and prior lifetimes or in this lifetime. And there can be immense amount of emotions coming up. Um, there's so many reasons why someone will come to you and talk to you about something. And it's not my job to judge. And so I hear a lot of people come through my doors over the years who have talked about how they have felt extremely judged. And my experience that I shared with you, so did I. And I didn't even know why that was brought up in the first place. Um, especially in that way, because it wasn't a conversation about sexuality or anything like that. It was kind of just someone projecting their judgment onto something they saw in a composite chart that to this day, I still don't even know what they're talking about. Um, <clears throat> and it was their own assumption and judgment projected. You can't do that, period. Um, that's why astrology is a science of observation and correlation. It's why I tend to ask my clients questions or is this making sense? Or do you have a question? Um, because a, a session with an astrologer shouldn't be them talking at you. It should be a conversation where you get to ask about what it is you're wanting to know about. And that person, person should, the astrologer should stop from time to time to ask, is this making sense? Do you have any other questions? Is this resonating? And if it's not, then asking more questions and being open to it. It's not about me being right all the time. It's about me trying to help. And archetypes are vast and wide and they can show up in a plethora of ways. And so sometimes you really do have to be a detective and ask questions. So if an astrologer is working with you in that way, that is amazing. That is someone who is being ethical. It's not about them being all knowing. That's the other dynamic that I hear a lot is people will come in and <clears throat> whether it be an astrologer or some other type of spiritual uh, profession, they will feel like a person is just trying to kind of um, dangle a carrot, like give them a little bit of, of information and holding back so that they'll see them again. And that, um, and, and they're wanting that person to come to them about everything, right? I have some clients that are repeat clients, but they are, it's of their own volition. Um, and occasionally I'll be like, hey, I'm about to do this um, birthday special or whatever. And because you see me so often is, do you want me to book something for you in case this fills up? That's very different than, um, withholding information in hopes of someone coming back to you. So you can be the all knowing one, uh, a good practitioner and whatever, um, field is always going to try to empower you and validate you and does not want to create any type of dependency, period. That is the mark of a true, blue, ethical, spiritual person is not wanting to create any type of dependency, okay? The last dynamic I want to talk about that I hear a lot about that I want to kind of counteract through this video, I hope that this video is helpful to you guys, um, <clears throat> is sometimes I have clients come to me and they 
will have gone to another astrologer and I end up spending that session undoing what another astrologer said. And it's pertaining to some specific sign or house placement of a planet and a specific, uh, in a specific um, sign and a specific house. So we're dealing with the blending and synthesizing of archetypes. And what ends up happening is the archetype is overgeneralized by another astrologer or they're projecting their own stuff onto that archetype because maybe they have it strongly in their chart. I'm not really sure, but it's overly generalized and it becomes demonized. I will say there are specific signs that I see this happen quite often in, and that would be Leo, um, the fifth house, Scorpio, the eighth house, and sometimes Capricorn, but it's more specific to Leo and Scorpio. I tend to get clients who come in in tears because someone told them that they were some famous ruler or sadistic person in a prior lifetime. And the reason why they're feeling so much horrible guilt or judgment or shame, kind of pulling in Virgo Capricorn, um, is because they mistreated people. And that's why they're, you know, having so many issues. And that's why people treat them terrible is because they were, tr they treated people terrible in a prior life before. I've even had someone with a lot of eighth house stuff come in and shared with me how she had been sexually assaulted and how she saw another astrologer and that astrologer told her the reason why that happened was because she had sexually assaulted someone in a prior lifetime and that is not what was reflected in this woman's chart um so i want to kind of talk a little bit about this People tend to focus on the negative qualities of particular signs, I feel like, but there's something that everyone needs to know is that there are natural expressions of them. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually think that Leo and Scorpio, Capricorn can be very beautifully expressed whenever it is, is natural. So I want to talk a little bit about what the natural expressions are, are of those for those of you who have dealt with someone demonizing this in your own chart. And I also want to talk a little bit about karma, because that's what tends to be brought up with these signs is that you have really bad, shitty karma. And that's why in this lifetime, all of this stuff is happening to you. Karma usually doesn't work that way. Karma usually works in the way of us meeting people from prior lifetimes that we have unfinished business with. When we are resisting our own evolution on an emotional level through evolutionary and karmic necessity, we will re-experience certain dynamics in this lifetime that can be absolutely not pleasant. Um, and part of that is because we have been resisting dealing with it on some type of level. I am going to be really honest. Even in my chart, it reflects someone who's had a lot of sexual ass assaults. And in this lifetime, I did experience that a couple of times. Luckily, through EAA, what I learned about this was... It's not because I did that to anyone before, and this is really important for people to hear, not regarding me, but like if you've been told some bullshit that this happened to you because you did this, that's not how karma works. Most often, the reason why things like this happen is they are a re-experience of something that has happened in the past, in a prior lifetime. And for me personally, and this is what I see often, 
is we only evolve through the emotional body, not through analyzing or intellectualizing. That can help, but truly you have to experience the full emotionality and to heal in order to evolve and to grow. I had horrendous things happen to me, not just in this lifetime, but prior, and I never dealt with them. It was too hard. I would check out. I committed suicide in prior lifetimes. I have um, I have abandoned children before because I felt like I was crazy because of bad things happening to me. All sorts of different reasons revolving around my own self-preservation or the illusion of it in prior lifetimes. But ultimately, it was not me dealing with the trauma and the emotional dynamics of it. And in this lifetime, I re-experienced, I chose in this lifetime to re-experience key things in order for me to evolve through them. So that way I could take responsibility of my own healing and not check out again. This is a dynamic that is seen so often. It is one of the reasons why it takes us so long to evolve is because it's hard dealing with trauma. And that is one of the biggest reasons why we will experience certain things in this lifetime. Not because we're here to suffer, not because we're bad. It's not usually because we've done something bad. It's because something horrible happened in a prior lifetime and we just didn't deal with it because we didn't have the tools. We didn't know how. It was painful. It was traumatizing. It was hard. And at some point on a soul level, we choose to re-enter that emotional fracture. And I want to make that very clear to people who have been told that this happened to you because you did this to someone. I'm going to say about 90% of the time, that's absolute bullshit. It is literally because we need to deal with the emotional dynamics of it. So that is... Um, an evolutionary necessity, right? To have to re-experience something like that. And then karma is where we're re-experiencing relationships with others or certain personal dynamics that didn't ever get to come to fruition so we couldn't move on, all right? That's why there's so many people who have um, karmic relationships. It's very rare that you're gonna see a a soulmate relationship. Um, it's very rare. I think that a lot of us want to believe that it's more common, but it's not. It takes a long time to get to the place of a soulmate. And it's karma mates who typically end up being soulmates because they choose to walk it out, to go through the motions, life after life. And um there's a spiritual dynamic that's underlying. But most often, most of us are experiencing karmic relationships. <clears throat> and it's because there's unfinished business and we're needing to learn. And that can be a whole other conversation that I can give if you guys want me to about different soul types and what they mean um, when we're dealing with relationships. Because there's... there's uh, different soul typing through um, relational dynamics. But for this video's sake, I just wanted to touch on that. Now, the last thing is I want to tell you, this is going back to how I see certain signs and houses get demonized and it's usually through someone's own projection. Like the whole Leo thing, you were some king or queen who was evil and mean and this and that or you were famous and blah 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 sure oftentimes leo can deal with a lot of fame and recognition but sometimes <clears throat> what i typically see especially if someone has uh, a leo dynamic dealing with um especially if it's like ruled by a taurus sun or something like that Oftentimes there can be, and if you pull in Virgo and um, Capricorn, oftentimes what I see is 
someone who was their own unique individual self, Leo, and in a prior lifetime was persecuted and judged and possibly killed for being different. And so in this lifetime, if they have a lot of Leo, it can be where there needs to be extreme self-focused in order to self-actualize through reconnecting with their own unique individuality, which they abandoned in a prior lifetime stemming from trauma. There, so this is a way that Leo can present itself. Leo, whenever it is naturally expressed, is someone who does need self-focus because there's something special that they are meant to do and they will feel it on some type of level. And it, it's because that's where they're at evolutionary wise. And it's it's a necessary function. Now, if it's distorted, of course, it can get into narcissism and elitism and an exclusionary behavior. But whenever it's naturally expressed, it's someone who is here to self-actualize and have some socially relevant um, purpose that's meant to help the collective. And so there needs to be a lot of self-focus in order to figure that out, in order to self-actualize that. Other dynamic I see is a lot with Scorpio. These are people who are, you know, you hear um, that they're manipulative, that they're bad, um, that they abandon people, that they have, uh, distorted sexuality, um, evil is another thing that gets projected on the, on Scorpio a lot. Um, and I mean, you guys can name off what you've heard about Scorpio in the comments. Whenever Scorpio is naturally, or the eighth house is naturally expressed, that is someone who is wanting to get down to business. They are here to evolve and they are going for it even if it is shit that they feel like could kill them they are wanting to confront themselves on a soul level so that they can evolve and oftentimes they're realizing that what's in other people is in them and it induces humility and there's a natural sextile between virgo and scorpio for a reason so these are people who will want to get down to business they are the people who are the proverbial want to pull the curtain back and to confront all types of stuff. And they are very misunderstood because they're actually just wanting to understand when other people are wanting to resist. So they are souls who, when naturally expressed, are going to be confronting everything inside of them on an emotional and psychological level because they're wanting to evolve and they're wanting to go for it and they're wanting to strengthen their soul. And in some, <clears throat> some charts, you can see that they are actually um, changing the center of gravity within their soul through going through and confronting all types of emotional and psychological dynamics. Um, yes, whenever it's distorted, that can be someone who truly is resisting their own evolution uh, willing to go down with the sinking ship or someone who absolutely has an immense amount of insecurity. And so they will manipulate situations in order to control. But everyone has a Scorpio in their chart. Everyone has an eighth house in their chart. Everyone has a Pluto in their chart. All of us have this function within us. It's whether or not you're trying to um, confront what your own hidden motivations are, this, that, or the other. It can become distorted and it can become very dark, but oftentimes more often than not, it's, it's not. It's someone who's actually, especially if they're walking through my door, evolutionary astrology, they're wanting to evolve. So they are doing it. <laughs> So I just want to jump on here and talk a little bit about the things that come through my door, the things that clients have told me about their experiences and me trying to validate that that more often is not. And hopefully I've given some clarification about certain things. Um, if you have a question about a certain archetype and you felt like there has been a projection onto you in a different astrology session about 
something in your chart, if you want to be vulnerable on this channel and ask me, hey, someone said this about this, I, you know, I can talk to you about that archetype if you want. I can't really go into your full chart because I'm not going to have it. And that's more for a natal session reading. But if you want to say, is this is this accurate about this sign or this planet or this house? Um, I can definitely tell you the natural expression of it and the distorted expression if you want some clarification. I'm here to help. I'm quite frankly tired of not my clients coming through telling me this, but I'm just upset that it's happening in the first place. Um, <clears throat> and if you feel, I've had clients who have told me that they feel like astrologers, when they have a specific question, that that astrologer will hold back. If you're paying someone for that, for them to answer that question and you feel like they're holding back, you have a right to tell them that and to not be afraid. And maybe that person just needs to learn more about astrology. I don't know. Um, but essentially you are paying for a service and you have a right to give feedback and there's nothing wrong with that you can tell someone this didn't resonate or this was actually hurtful and not helpful this had a negative impact on me um this wasn't positive you know sometimes i can have a heavy session with someone because they're really working on something or sometimes you know I have people who are like, I know you're going to point something out because that's how you are. I watch your videos or whatever. And I will I'll go there. I'll quite often it's they're saying something and I'm looking at their chart and picking up on that. There could be a relational dynamic that is needing to actually be confronted. And so sometimes I will, I'll be like, so what's going on with your relationship or this or that? Now, if someone doesn't want to talk about it. I would never force them to. Um, but it's sometimes I get like a feels like a tap on the shoulder, like to to bring something up. But I will never um, give my opinion or what I am seeing reflected in the chart if they don't want to know about it. I can ask about something if I feel intuitively I'm guided to ask. But if someone tells me no or they're not comfortable, I'm going to go in the direction that they want me to go in. So these are things I wanted to talk about that I feel like are needed to be talked about. Um, and I'm sorry for people who've ever had a reading that was hurtful or harmful. Um, I've never had anyone say anything to me personally, but I'm also not perfect. So I hope that I've never done that to anyone either. I, <clears throat> But I am, it does upset me when people come to me and they tell me about something that's happened in a session and it's been extremely harmful or hurtful. So anyway, let me know if you have anything to say or questions. Uh, leave it down in the comment section. I would section. I would love to have a discourse about this. And if anyone wants me to answer any questions, hopefully this opens up a conversation and a dialogue for you to either share or to ask. So I will see you all soon.